This is the Overdue Homework Podcast. Welcome to the show. That's Trav. I'm Drew. And I'm Trav. This is the Overdue Homework Podcast. And as always, we are here to give you our opinions on 80s and 90s media. Please contact us at OverdueHomeworkPodcast at gmail.com. Trav, how are you doing? The glorious day off, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing super good. I got a whole bunch of crap done around the house. Got a haircut. Didn't have to work. Doesn't really get much better than that. And then your homework's only 33 minutes total. So I got a <laughs> yes. few watch-throughs of that. So it was a pretty nice day. How about yourself? Um, You know, uh, I'm doing great. Uh, besides one fact. I bit the ever-living hell out of my tongue yesterday. Out. So if I sound goofy at all, it doesn't sound too bad today because the swelling is uh, down quite a bit. But it was so bad. Kristen was gone. I called her. And I was like, my tongue won't stop bleeding. (laughs) Like, it was really bad. Like, I had to hold a paper towel compress on my tongue to get it to stop. Yikes. Yeah, it was like deep purple blood i was like whoa that is a deep bite what were you eating just uh, some mini tacos just some mini tacos just destroyed my tongue it's like right in the middle of my tongue it's just oh my gosh it's it was supposed to be a danger free activity but no nope. just Des- destroyed it and so all day i'm all like have anxiety ridden about uh, my tongue being destroyed and it being in pain and being like should i go to the doctor should i not go to the doctor about this <laughs> it hasn't bled today so that's a good thing that's a plus <laughs> But other than that, I'm doing absolutely great. <laughs> uh, so today in the preparation in preparation for this podcast, I used one article, and that was on mentalfloss.com, and that was by Roger Cormier. So thanks, Roger. And of course, our homework review today is Beavis and Butthead Season 2, Episodes 8 and 26, and then Season 3, Episode 13. And as I stated in the last episode... Uh, That's because that's what's available for free on Paramount. So we figured making it as accessible as possible for everybody. Obviously. Um, Obviously, uh, Beavis and Butthead was created by Mike Judge, directed by Mike Judge and Yvette Kaplan, voiced by Mike Judge, Tracy Grandstaff, Christopher Brown, and David Spade. So David Spade, you heard his voice, right? He's the one that does like the interstitials in between the commercials and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. And it was when Spade was on SNL in 1993. So kind of crazy to think about. Like as a kid, I had no idea that it was David Spade. But it's very obvious who it is now when you listen to it. Uh, The music was composed by Mike Judge, so that's kind of cool. He was in a band and such. And the original release date was March 8th, 1993. Uh, So Beavis and Butthead, they got their start on Liquid Television. Do you happen to remember Liquid Television at all on TV? That was like my first real foray into adult uh, animation. It was on way past my bedtime. Or wait, at nighttime? Yeah, yes. with like uh, Duckman and... I don't know if Duckman was on Liquid Television, but I know like Eon Flux was on Liquid Television. Uh, the Max was on Liquid Television. The Head was on Is Liquid Television. Is the Head television. the one with the big brain? Yeah, the dude okay, with the yep. giant head. Yep, yep, I yep. used to watch that. And I always wonder what the heck that show was called. Yep, the, the Head. head. <laughs> the Head. Yeah, uh, okay. I, that's how I started watching it too. Right, and they also had all types of weird stuff on there just like mini like one-off stuff like especially like i remember a lot of like the original like first generation computer animation that people were doing and it was just like crazy shapes and stuff and it was, it was for stoners at the yeah. time. you know that's yeah. what it was for uh so beavis and butthead like i said they got their start on liquid television uh so mike judge he went from teaching himself animation and playing bass for anson thunderberg and the rockets Thunderbird. What a weird... Anson Thunderbird and the Rockets. That's quite the band name. Yeah, it is. Uh, To having uh, one of his cartoons played on MTV. Uh, That all happened in a year. So he taught himself how to do animation, was in this band, and then within a year's time, he had a short on Liquid Television, and that was the cartoon short Milton. And Milton should sound familiar to you because that is uh, the character in Office Space that has his red stapler. 
Oh, okay. So Office Space is loosely based on this like five minute short called Milton. Oh my gosh. Uh, so it's kind of cool, and that appeared in 1991. So in 1992, Beavis and Butthead made their uh, first uh, impressions with uh, an episode called Frog Baseball. Have you ever seen that short? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty brutal, honestly, right? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty gross. It's pretty brutal. Uh, then, based on the reception of that single, it's like three minutes long, if I remember correctly, MTV uh, paid Judge for the rights for the two characters and ordered 65 four-minute cartoons. That's a lot of cartoons to order from a dude that just learned how to animate. Yeah. And it's pretty obvious that he had just learned how to animate, especially in these early episodes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, interestingly enough, though, MTV pulled Beavis and Butthead uh, off the air shortly after it premiered. Uh, so you would think that that's because of backlash, right? Because they're crazy. They're starting stuff on fire and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, Judge just literally couldn't keep up with uh, the demands of getting these shows animated. So they came back six weeks later on May 17th with scientific stuff and good credit um judge actually impro improvised most of the dialogue during the music videos um which you can tell right you can tell that it was just uh him just riffing off of stuff because yeah. it's a lot of the same repetitive stuff stuff um judge also uh virtually voiced all of the characters on the show and was just uh one of a handful of people that made up the writing staff um, he opted to add to his workload by winging it, like I said, um, for the music videos. And, but it was time saved on animation for the music videos that uh, really, uh, really worked it for him. So, um, Beavis and Butthead were named after a couple of kids that lived in Mike Judge's neighborhood. Which, what a kind of neighborhood did he live in? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> One was named after Bobby Beavis, who was a, like an athletic kid. He lived three blocks away from Judge when he was in college. Um, not similar in character. Uh, but uh, just similar in name, I guess. So, uh, But then there was also a 12-year-old in his neighborhood that called himself Iron Butt, apparently, because <laughs> he claimed he could never get injured from getting kicked in the butt. Uh, so he had friends that called him Butthead. Oh, okay. Right. okay, great. <laughs> That's one crazy neighborhood. <laughs> Very crazy na neighborhood. Um, so, you know, the whole Beavis fire, 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 fire. Yeah. It was a, it was a big part of Beavis and Butthead, right? Obviously. Uh, all references to fire were permanently removed from Beavis and Butthead after the show was blamed for a child's death in 1993. Jeez. A uh, five-year-old boy set his Ohio home on fire, which killed his two-year-old sister. Uh, the mother claimed Beavis's fire-making and blatant spoken love of arson were responsible. So MTV was, was response to only air the show after 10.30 p.m. Sure. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, can, I couldn't imagine Beavis and Butthead being a primetime show anyways. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Uh, and then they also wiped all references to uh, fire um, f for the rest of the series. But it was allowed again in 2011, apparently. So there you go. When it came back. <laughs> do you remember when it came back in 2011 when Beavis and Butthead came back? I, I remember so. watching they did the reality shows yeah. instead of music videos. Yeah, I remember watching a handful of episodes and just being like, hey, it doesn't really recapture the magic as, it, as yeah. the old episodes do for me. Um, <clears throat> a funny story. Um, Senator Ernest F. Hollings, he was a Democrat from South Carolina, famously referred to Beavis and Butthead as Buff Coat and Beaver on the uh, <laughs> uh, on the Senate floor when he was trying to get the uh, basically trying to get Beavis and Butthead uh, banned for. Reasons of the fire and the violence and all that stuff. Yeah. So he literally said, we've got this, what is it, buff coat and beaver or beaver and something else? I haven't seen it. I don't watch it, but whatever it is, it was on at 7 o'clock and buff coat, buff coat. It was Beavis and buff coat, buff coat. <laughs> and now they put it at 1030, I think. So, I mean, leave it to our senators to be... Not necessarily in touch with, <laughs> with, yeah, the, not so much. <laughs> with the rest of the country, I guess, even though we vote for them, I guess. Um, a couple <laughs> of famous fans of Beavis and Butthead, one of them being Marlon Brando. Uh, he was a gigantic Beavis and Butthead fan. So according to, Judge, according to Judge, Johnny Depp told him that Depp and Marlon Brando would imitate Beavis and Butthead with Depp, Depp as Beavis and Brando as Butthead. This would occur as they worked together on 1994's Don Juan DeMarco. Nice. I've never seen that movie. No. Nope. I don't plan on that one being uh, credit, extra credit, or maybe it could be extra credit, but I don't plan on it being uh, in the show anytime. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, another very famous animator, Matt Groening of The Simpsons, he was a giant fan of Beavis and Butthead too. That makes sense to me. Nice. So he claimed that he claimed that he liked the show so much because it took the heat off of Bart Simpson being responsible for the downfall of Western civilization. <laughs> Do you remember that at all? How parents hated Simpsons and hated Bart and hated all that stuff? Not really. I just remember it being a really big deal that Bart Simpson was going to be the cause of all our problems for the rest of our lives. <laughs> now you could look back at those episodes and they're incredibly tense compared to what's on television nowadays. Yeah, exactly. And then in case you were wondering, it's Butthead's house that you're usually seeing when we see it on the show. Um, it's not officially canon, but Judge responded to a reporter's assumption that uh, they were always in Butthead's house, and uh, Judge said he always imagined that that would be the case. So there you go. It's Butthead's house. Nice. I kind of always assumed it was Beavis's house. I don't know why. I just always assumed it was Beavis's house. Meh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Meh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so should we get into the breakdown here and hit these episodes? There's one thing we should break down. It's probably this episode. Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Let's do that. I think so. (laughs) So our first episode that we're going to break down is entitled Sick. Uh, In this episode, Beavis and Butthead are sick, and after seeing a commercial on cold medicine, they decide to... Uh, to go to the dock and try to get some messed up on some cough syrup. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, Sick opens up with the duo eating Cheetos on the couch and what could be in what could be the grossest fashion they could possibly eat them. Right. Yeah. Absolutely hideous. The close ups of their mouths and the snot coming out of their noses. Disgusting. It's very disgusting. And it's just, you know, a drawing. But yet I'm, every time I watch that episode, I was like, wow, that's that's hideous. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> Truly gross. Early nine, early nineties humor equals gross out humor for sure. Definitely, for sure. Definitely taking a book or a page out of the Ren and Stimpy book with that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, what's worse? I got to ask though. What's worse? Is it Beavis and Butthead or Beavis blowing his nose in the TV guide or on his clothing through the rest of the episode? Definitely his clothing. <laughs> Definitely his clothing. Especially when he blows it uh, into his underwear. Into later his underwear. <laughs> really the gross. inside. The inside of his underwear. <laughs> So, yeah, Beavis does just that. He uh, he blows his nose into the TV guide. Ooh, big one. He's very <laughs> impressed with himself. Uh, the boys finally see that commercial for the cold medicine on TV. Did you know that the leading prescription cold remedy is more than 70% alcohol or that it can make you feel lightheaded, woozy, even hallucinogenic? Who's hallucinogenic? Hallucinogenic. Say that word for me. Hallucinogenic. Hallucinogenic. Or that... Th- or that it can make you feel lightheaded, woozy, or even hallucinogenic. Whoa. I think we need a doctor. Yeah, we're sick. Check it out. <laughs> and then he blows his nose into his hand. Cool. <laughs> Anything in the name of getting messed up for these two, right? Seriously. And cut to a music video. Cut it's so, to it's, a music video. It's so weird because there's no rhyme or reason to the music videos. They have nothing to do with the story. It's just all. hard cut. Hard music cut. Music video. Yep. Uh, they love Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you a fan of Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood? Yeah, why not? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's so weird because it's like a, you look at uh, uh, this video and it almost looks like a parody, right? Yeah. It looks like it's a fake video, but this was a very serious video from a very large band at the <laughs> yeah. time. Very, very odd to me. Hey, has somebody pitched a tent? <laughs> the video tells a message. Yeah, the message is Vince Neil's a wuss. <laughs> the dude from Danzig could kick his ass. <laughs> they love Danzig. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> hey, butthead, what's what does Doctor Feelgood mean? <laughs> that's like when a doctor makes you cough and he puts his fingers on your nads. Oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you don't have a female doctor, do you, Beavis? <laughs> that was a, uh, for, a good laugh. That out was loud a moment. very good line. That was a very good line. No rebuttal from you. <laughs> <in there. laughs> no. Nope. Uh, Butthead decides to turn the channel, though, to the other music station that also runs music videos at the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because Scarface isn't as. So the video isn't as cool as Scarface because the video theme was like a cocaine drug Scarface Ian thing. Yeah. Right? Uh, the next video is uh, Billy Idol's Dancing with Myself. <laughs> Hey, this looks like that Less Miserables poster in Miss Dickie's class. This Less Miserables looking thing sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The boys do crack the code on the music video, though. Hey, I detect a masturbatory overtone. I'm playing with myself. Myself. I'm I'm playing playing with with myself. (laughs) He's talking about choking his chicken. Yeah, he's talking about spanking his monkey. (laughs) And. Done with music video. <laughs> done with the music video. Cut to the ER. Uh, that poor dude with the fork in his head. 
Who wants cheese? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like his injury may warrant immediate attention, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> and I don't think anyone's asking what's wrong at that point. <laughs> no. <laughs> or he's sitting in a chair. Yeah, he's not, right? like waiting yeah. to get up there. Not only He was like wandering around the emergency room, obviously, <laughs> yeah. in distress, right? Yeah. Uh, but luckily for our duo, he's out of it from the foreign object in his brain, and he can't hold on to his number anymore and drops it. Yeah. Uh, number 83 is called, and Beavis ca- he gets that number off the ground, and they cut in line. Beavis and Butthead cut in line. Is there any emergency room in the country that makes you take a number? Is uh, is that a thing? No, I've, I think I've only been in one once, so I don't know. I mean, I not, don't think it's a not, thing. Not in Minnesota. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, do you, maybe it's more of a comment by Judge, which I don't know why he'd be trying to make some sort of comment about our medical system in Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. More of a comment saying, like, we get treated as numbers in the medical system. Right. I don't know, but I don't know why he would do that. We're number 83, and we need a leading subscription cold medicine. <laughs> the nurse <laughs> the nurse literally couldn't care about them anymore. What is your problem? We're sick. <laughs> Room 7, take your clothes off. I'm going on break. <laughs> uh, in the examination room, the boys are in their tighty whiteies. And the doctor says wrecked them and nearly killed them. <laughs> <laughs> and then Beavis makes his underwear into a thong just as the doctor enters the room. I I mean, <laughs> why would he do that? I don't understand why he would do that. But, yeah, and okay. that's after he blew his snot into the inside, <laughs> yeah, too. He's I'm tightening right. it up. She saw your butt. And then the the, ner- the doctor's just like, so you're sick, huh? Yeah, it's such a weird voice acting <laughs> experience for me. Yeah, I think we have an ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we need uh, rest, fluids, and the leading description cold remedy, a big <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Subscription and then description right. and then later conniption. Yep, it's the best. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we'll start. Well, let's start with Mr. Butthead. How about you hop on the table and I'll take a quick look in your ear. And then Butthead pulls down his underwear and bends over. That's gross. Yeah. <laughs> Notch your rear. <laughs> you can call him Crisco because he's fat in the can. Shut up, Beavis. <laughs> And then to cut this whole visit short, because the doctor realizes that she's just dealing with a couple of morons, um, she gives them both an antibiotic shot. Uh, So that means no leading inscription cold remedy? No wild cherry? Or cool grape goodness? (laughs) Nope. Sorry, Beavis. Uh, They get their shots, and then they're told that the nurse would be in to give them uh, their bill. So they split because they don't have any money, obviously. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, they escape without their clothing in the a- into the alley, which I don't know why they didn't just grab their clothing on the way out. I mean, they're Seriously. morons. They're morons. That's Obviously. for sure. This sucks. No medicine, no buzz, nothing. <laughs> uh, they are feeling better, like instantly, so that's great. Um, old Forkhead is there, too, in the alleyway in a garbage can full of medical waste. <laughs> yeah, a whole uh, bunch of syringes. <laughs> that's that's like, all right. really bothered me. Honestly, that really <laughs> bothered me. It was like, reminded me of, I think, Saw 2 or yep, Saw 3. Saw 2. Saw yep. 2. She gets never dumped. forget no, that. No, that's a, that's a never forget moment. Yeah. Man, a pit full of syringes. That's Ugh. never. Where's the pickles? Where's the pickles? <laughs> uh, now that that's over with, cut to another video. <laughs> another video. <laughs> <laughs> New kids on the block, hanging tough. Uh, they hate NKOTB. Yeah, that's they a do. Fact. Uh, hey, look, it's the dudes on Stewart's lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> this video needs more explosions and like close-ups of butts. Yeah, they should have some somebody come out and kick these guys. <laughs> like Ice Cube, he could come out and kick all these guys. He said hanging. <laughs> <laughs> so I've woken up with this song in my head repeatedly for the last couple of days from doing my homework. Oh, oh man. Just every morning, hanging tough. Oh my god, it's not a good song. No, it is not. It's just not a good song. It. I appreciate it, so I kind of like the song. It's not good. I kind of like it. I kind of like the video because it's like a really good representation of like what 1992 was all about. It really, really is. Excuse me. Uh, No cold medicine means no buzz, so these guys decide to go lick some toads. (laughs) Tastes like chicken. (laughs) Here, Here, toady, toady, toady. 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 (laughs) That's it for that episode. (laughs) Uh, Boy, but we get to wrap it out with Alice in Chains, them bones. They love Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah, they do. (laughs) Whoa. Hey, baby. (laughs) How did that happen? (laughs) These guys are pissed off. Yeah, they're 
Cool. <laughs> I'm not a very big Alice in Chains fan, and I hate how the guy was saying, them bones. <laughs> them I, bones. I, I just did not like that yeah, song at all. That was in Guitar Hero, I swear. I because think you're there's right, yeah. multiple Alice in Chains, so mm-hmm. right away, anything that's been in Guitar Hero, oh, I've heard that a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. I, if it wasn't Guitar Hero 1, it was Guitar Hero 2 or 3. Also, I'd like to say I'm very glad your Beavis is amazing, because <laughs> when I was a kid, I could do Beavis, and I tried before I came here. I'm like, ugh. I hope he's cool with doing Beavis because <laughs> I can't do Beavis, but it's so good. <laughs> well, now we get to move on to the next episode, Friday night. Uh, and it opens up with our dudes heading to the Maxi Mart for a Friday night out. Raincoat, clo- Raincoats included. <laughs> Ribbed for her pleasure. Yeah, unscented. <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> I love how okay. Beavis is like, he's like, yeah, it's unscented. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to... Oh, Rico Suave, <laughs> Roberto, B- sorry, that one's you. Roberto Burritos. <laughs> yeah, guacamole. Hey, butthead, what's a gigolo? That's like a big fat dude. <laughs> yeah, a lot about the this this, this episode and well, this music video in particular is pretty offensive by yeah, today's t- <laughs> by today's standards. So. One cut it on today's. Right. So they changed the video because they don't like Rico Suave very much. Which that's another song that's easily caught into my brain, and yep. will just they be like Rico Suave. Suave. How is that a popular? So- how was that a popular song in the video? Just, yes. You know him with the leather jacket with no shirt and then jeans and like cowboy. Boots. And then he says he likes to eat his women raw like sushi in it. Like, come on, that is hideous. <laughs> that is hideous. <laughs> that is hideous. So they change it again to this other music video channel. I guess I'm assuming that they're probably changing it to VH1 because that was it's, like the only one at the it's time. It's gotta be. And it's Bow Wow Wow, I Want Candy. This sucks. Yeah, and it sucks too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. She should get naked. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Beavis. You're slobbering all over me. Does she want candy? Yeah, she wants a Baby Ruth and some Starbursts. Yeah, and some wacky wafers. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I like that the interaction between them in that music video. Um, that song is pretty, like, it, it reminds me of those, like, pure 80s commercials in the 90s for, like, the CDs or cassette tapes. Because yeah. that was always one of them yeah. that was on those on those commercials for sure. So we move back to the Maxi Mart, and the guys are getting a lot of entertainment out of a sign that says Wiener, <laughs> 99 cents. Uh, and then the guys spot a chick, and Butthead makes his move. Chili burger, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she leaves immediately. Uh, do you think that was? Do you think uh, Jim Carrey may have lifted that uh, cadence for uh, um, Dumb and Dumber when he goes, <laughs> big gulps, huh? It could have been. Because it's kind of the same cadence, and could've it been. came out after this episode, so... I find it super weird that she's, like, 40-something, <laughs> yeah. and he's going up and going for it, but... Yeah, and she doesn't even say anything. She just, collect, she just collects her cheeseburger, chili burger, and leaves. <laughs> Uh, we get to see through some security footage that the boys have been at the Maxi Mart for hours, yeah. standing in the same Three place. Three hours. Just like, find something better to do with your time, I guess. Maybe. Seriously. I don't know. I don't think standing at a gas station would be all that fun, but no. that's what they do on and a Friday night. And I don't night. think they'd be allowed to stand there for three hours. Yeah, and they're like right in front of the cashier's, the, the registered desk, yeah. too, so... Uh, the boys are hungry, understandably, after standing there for hours, so they go eat some food off the shelf. Hey, you gonna pay for that? I guess. Yeah, you guessed right. Oh, yeah? What do I win? <laughs> that's, a, that's a witty line from Butthead, whether he means it or not. Yeah. I could see him literally meaning, like, thinking that he is going to win something from yeah. this dude. But if he doesn't, I'll give Butthead some credit. That's pretty witty. Yeah. Enter the biker, babe. Hey, Butthead, I'm getting a stiffy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Friday night is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Biker Babe basically sees them as easy marks and stuffs their clothing full of food. I love you. <laughs> and when she puts the canister of whatever down his pants, he just looks at her. I love you. That's <laughs> the best thing ever. Uh, Biker Babe tells them to play dumb. What does that mean? Yeah, you don't have to play, do you, Beavis? You don't have to play. Uh, they approach the counter and she pays the 50 cents for her coffee and the boys get busted by the clerk. Uh, hey, what's under your clothes? Wouldn't you like to know? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, biker babe, dois, douses, 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 the, douses, <laughs> douses. <laughs> the biker babe douses the clerk with her coffee, and they make a break for it. Uh, the image of Beavis and Butthead on the back of that motorcycle is forever hilarious. Yeah, it just definitely. looks so funny to me. And then 
cut to a music video. <laughs> cut. <laughs> cut to a music video, just like that. The ultimate hard cut show. <laughs> yes, really, it is. Uh, Grun Truck. I don't. Grun Truck. I have no idea what that band is. No idea. It's a song called Crazy Love. Yep. Uh, they love this video, but it to- it totally sucks. It totally sucks. Who the hell is Grun Truck? <laughs> Who the hell is that? This kicks butt. That drummer has lights coming out of his butt. <laughs> lights are cool. Especially when they're coming out of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> when you read the lines, you can tell that Mike Judge is ad-libbing because he basically says the same thing. Yeah. They like both say the same thing over <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> That video was just absolutely terrible. terrible. Just terrible. I didn't understand. Like There was close-ups of children's toys and stuff. It was just a weird video. So we're back with our duo and the biker babe on the side of the street, and she's got to get going. Take us with you. Yeah, be our woman. Sorry, but I got important things to do. Like what? I got to get gas. (laughs) (laughs) And then she speeds off. See you later. Hey, butthead, I still got my condominium. What do I do with it? Saturday Saturday night! night. So they do the same thing every weekend. They carry their condoms with them that they're never going to use and are probably expired. (laughs) And don't uh, don't get laid ever. Nope. Never, never, never. So at least that like ends the story, and it makes sense to cut to some music videos for this instead of like basically cutting in like the middle of a sentence practically. Uh, And the next video is "Color Me Bad." I want to sex you up. Uh, They hate it, but I am a fan. I don't know why I love this song. I love the (laughs) video. It just is such a piece of '90s cheese, you know. Yeah, "Color Me Bad." Uh, just too cheesy not to love it. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then they both do their best impression of the opening that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> this is that super group with Kenny G, George, Michael, and Snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a super suck group. <laughs> hey, Beavis, do you think if I sang like a wuss, I could get some chicks? Well, you look like a wuss. Shut up, Beavis. And you talk like a wuss. I'll kick your ass like a wuss if you don't shut up. (laughs) This is irritating. Next video. (laughs) Uh, That's really funny that he says that he'll kick his ass like a wuss. (laughs) What does that even mean? (laughs) I'll kick your ass like a wuss. (laughs) Uh, Next video is uh, Terrence Trent Darby, She Kissed Me. So do you know the song Wishing Well? I've heard of it. Yeah. That's Terrence Trent Dar- Trent, T- Terrence Trent Darby also. So nice. that's like his more popular. Th- that uh, how's it go? That wishing well, kiss and tell. There you go. Uh, yep, yeah, I enjoy that for sure. Uh, she kissed him where? Down there. <laughs> hey Beavis, have you ever had a girl kiss you down there? <laughs> yeah. Liar. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if chicks did whatever you want? Yeah, then you can make them mow the lawn and do all your chores. Oh, yeah? How old are you, Beavis? <laughs> this video is complicated. Yeah, it just needs some accidents and some boobs and butts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just always with the boobs and the butts and stuff. That's the end of that episode. <laughs> did, is it in the next episode, or did we skip the part where Beavis asked Butthead how he knows so much about chicks, and he's like, well, I wasn't born in a barn, but I know how to <laughs> choke my chicken. Yeah, that's in the next one. Oh, okay. That's in the next one. That's that, was, the, that was such a funny. That's the line of the. That's the line of the episode for <laughs> us. That's the line of our episode for sure. So the next episode is Sporting Goods, and this is an episode that I remember being on TV all the time. Like yep. it was a high rotation episode. As soon as I, as soon as this one started, I was like, "Oh, the eye patches." <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, the boys are in need of some jock straps, and we get some much needed Daria. I'm a giant Daria fan, so yeah. I love Daria. In these I episodes. love that they almost call her diarrhea right yeah, away, yeah. but he does stop himself. He does stop himself. On the steps outside of the school, the guys are ha- uh, having grasshoppers fight because that's a thing. Ooh, I have never. I guess. I, have you? Do you know of people doing that? <laughs> Definitely like, not. I've never wanted to grab a grasshopper and then like hold on to it. A and then yeah, exactly. I don't know. And then B. What is it? A? I don't want to hold on to it. Two bugs are gross. Yeah. And D. Uh, <laughs> I've never known two people that wanted to fight grasshoppers like that. I that's guess. for sure. Must be a Texas thing because that's where Judge is from, and that's where this takes place is in that's, Texas. So yep. maybe it's a Texas. Huge thing. down in Texas. <laughs> so any of our listeners, if you want to confirm that for us, email us at overdue homework podcast at gmail dot com. Perfect. Thanks, Trav. <laughs> Uh, we see Daria. She's in charge of the fashion section at the school newspaper, even though she's more interested. 
interested in being an inquiring journalist, they gave her the fashion section because she's a girl, so sexist. But yeah, that was the 90s. <laughs> uh, she doesn't even like fashion. Um, then you can take pictures in the girls' locker room. Yeah, and inquire about how he'd like to please Big Daddy Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Butthead. <laughs> oh, some good, some good lines. Hard and cut. Hard cut. <laughs> Red Hot Chili Pepper is breaking the girl. So this was off that, uh, what was it, uh, Love, Sex, Magic? Is that what it was? Not sure. Something like that. It was on that album. The one before California came. Yes, it might have even been two before. Two, I don't. I think I'm not two, a. Actually. I'm not a giant Peppers fan, so I don't really know. But um, I didn't know this song existed, and I was like, okay, this is a Peppers song. It's, yeah. it's a lot different, right? They love the Chili Peppers for sure, and they especially love Flea. Yeah, they do. Uh, this isn't the Chili Peppers. This is like all wimpy and stuff. Shut up, Beavis. This is cool. <laughs> Sometimes cool bands have to do like. Real wimpy songs so they can get chicks. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes chicks like it when you get, like, all sensitive and stuff. Um, how come, uh, um, how come you, like, know so much about chicks, but then you never get any chicks? Well, I wasn't born on a barn, but I can choke my chicken. Some things just come natural. <laughs> like, taking a dump comes natural, but you don't have to learn how to take a dump in a toilet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Beavis doesn't poop in a toilet because he doesn't know. He doesn't know how. Apparently, <laughs> and he's that would be cool, you know, because I'm sick of <laughs> walking in and there's turds on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, yeah, that would be cool, Beavis. Please, <laughs> please, please, please. So now we're in gym class with Coach Buzzcut, and Buzzcut hates them despises beavis and butthead for the entirety of the series the entirety of the series <laughs> not just the episode. like he probably hates him who hates him more principal mcvicker or Buzzcut? probably Buzzcut. i think so mcvicker's super frustrated yes that he's dealing with uh, things uh, <laughs> i'm kind of sad he didn't make an appearance in any yeah. of these episodes um so buzz cut hits butthead in the face with a medicine ball that's yeah. what it looked like so not light really hit him in the head with it definitely nice catch butthead i think you're ready for the loser olympics cool do i get to miss school <laughs> you're next beavis <laughs> beavis it's funny because beavis gets ready to catch the ball but yeah. buzz cut hit, hits him in the crotch yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't have any groinal protection no. <laughs> Uh, it turns out it's required for class, um, even for their raisin sacks. That's a very funny line by Buzzcut. I thought <laughs> yeah. that was hilarious. Jack straps were not required in my gym class. Nope. No. Uh, no. Nope. I never had to wear a jack strap in gym class. Nope. nope. Only ever had two in seventh and eighth grade football. Yeah, I wore one in hockey. I mean, yep. it's hockey. You got to wear one in hockey. But never, <laughs> never in gym. No, no. But no. I didn't have my gym teacher hucking medicine balls at my crotch either. Uh, very, very true. So another Texas <laughs> thing. I don't know. Confirm that for us. It uh, must be a Texas must thing. Be a Texas. <laughs> Only in Texas. Email us. Uh, <laughs> so tomorrow they'll have to have jock straps or they're going to be enrolled in the remedial squat thrust class this summer. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> Yes, you do. Buzz cut. Yes, you do. So it's after the sporting goods store owned by an ex-con. Buddy's cool. He did time. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it in the 90s and people idolizing people that were in jail? Yeah, like I that was a it. popular thing within like this kind of adult animation, adult the uh, comedy type of thing. Makes them totally badass. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, Buddy sets him up with some size small jock straps. Still too big. I'm no Don Johnson, you know. <laughs> Another great line by <laughs> Butt Hudson. So in the SML, who would ever say that? Yeah, nobody. We have S M and L. What do they say? Well, you look like a couple of S's. <laughs> what? Yeah, McVicker says that about us. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to try some uh, eye patches meant for uh, racquetball injuries. Yeah, yeah. And they're a perfect fit. The family jewels are secure. <laughs> but how in the world does this see the concept of that even work? And I think not, we can blow past that they only need that much protection down there, but it's a single strap and they're wearing it like underwear. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't uh, get it either. All right. Uh, so they must, the only thing, I was thinking about that too. So they must be some sort of hard cup or something for protection during racquetball. <laughs> yeah. Any way you look at it, I have never seen racquetball eye patches at a sporting <laughs> goods store to begin no. with. So it's a funny premise nonetheless, I They're guess. They're not big sellers. No. <laughs> He's had them there for years, he said. <laughs> they can have them for free, luckily, because they don't have any money. So. Uh, Daria ends up being at the, uh, sporting goods store too, because she has to do a report on some athletic wear. 
Uh, it's very good timing on her part, so she snaps a photo of the two of them and their new athletic supporters. Wow, even smaller than I thought. <laughs> Hard cut. Hard cut. <laughs> DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Uh, girls ain't nothing but trouble. They love it. Oh, yeah. Why was this style of rap so popular? The I'm, song is terrible. I'm not sure, but I do love the beat in the beginning. For sure. But then it gets to the actual right. lyrics, and right. I'm like, wow. He's just like talking about something that he did. Yeah. It's like not even, it's not like lyrical, it's yeah. not really rhyming. I was starting to wonder, is he using his fame to exploit rappers that are actually skilled at this point? Because I don't know. So I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure he was the Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff before he got the television show. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure he started his career as a musician. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure that's where it started. Because, yeah. Yeah, because Parents Just Don't Understand came out in like... Man, it must... It came out in like 89? 88? So it was before Fresh Prince came out. So I'm pretty sure. But... it's just such a bad song. Such a bad song. I do appreciate the sample, yeah. like you said, of the, bum, bum, was it I Dream bum, of Genie bum, bum, sample? Bum, yeah, bum, I did appreciate that. Um, it just, I, it's just like he's talking about what he's seeing or something like that. Like he's yeah. doing his best brick impression from Anchorman. <laughs> like, I love Lamp. I love this. I'm, yeah. You know, but whatever. It doesn't hold up for me one bit. Like, I could never see myself listening to some fresh prints from the 80s. Definitely could not. Could not do it. Right on, dude. Look, someone wrote half my name on a big brown tooth. Where? <laughs> Over there, it says butt. That was so weird. It was so. It was just that chick's butt, you know, <laughs> yeah. with butt written on it. It was it, just such a weird thing to have in yeah. that music video. Uh, well, back to gym class, and the boys uh, have fabricated a note to excuse, uh, to get excused from wearing their jack straps in gym class in general. Yeah. Please excuse Beavis and Butthead from wearing athletic, alphetic sip otters. They were unable to buy them because of a national shortage of alphetic sip otters. <laughs> <laughs> That's just terrible. That's just terrible. Uh, obviously, Coach uh, Buzzcut has some photographic evidence, though, that the two of them did get jack straps. Yeah. Uh, they made the front page of the school newspaper, and Buzzcut loves it. He hates them so much. So much. So much. Okay, people, squat thrust! <laughs> <laughs> and a final roll credits. Roll credits. Roll credits. Uh, did you like it? I loved it. Yeah, I, absolutely, I mean, right? These are always great, and it makes it super fun for us to just be one of the two main characters yes, back and forth. Yes, yes, it's read. fun. It's so fun. It was really fun to actually read all the script from that too. But mm-hmm. yeah, it doesn't get much better than Beavis and Butthead. That intro is one of the most like iconic, memorable intros for me for mm-hmm. sure. But I'm looking forward to like I told you the other day, like Waldo Burger. Is that what it's called? It's it's something it's, it's like the that. M flipped it's, upside it's, down yep. from McDonald's. But those are all my favorite when they're frying the rats and the deep fryer <laughs> and all that stuff. And then uh, the other VHS I rented all the time was There Goes the Neighborhood. So that's definitely got a couple in there where he's over at the neighbor's yard and mm-hmm. weed whacking and all sorts <laughs> of crap. Like, what is it? They go and they masturbate in his the tool, tool shed. shed. Let me whacking off in the tool shed. Whacking off in my tool shed. That wasn't us, sir. Because <laughs> he broke his glasses, so he can't quite recognize <laughs> if it's them or not. There's a funny line in that, too, where like he's to which we were whacking off in. Like, what is that from? It's in that. I think that might be in Do America. That is in Do America. Cause, little, yeah, because yeah, Robert Stack's character says you can't end a sentence in a preposition. <laughs> yeah, I can't. We should get to that movie. We sometimes. definitely have to get to that. That would be a lot of fun. Is this a goddamn? <laughs> <laughs> She's been with a bunch of sluts. <laughs> Uh, one of the most epic cornholio rants ever for is sure. into America. For sure. Titi caca, titi caca, tipi for my bunghole. Definitely. Oh, man, that's <laughs> such a good movie. Downing caffeine pills and candy. <laughs> like Jesus. Singing bunghole. Oh, so good. <laughs> but yeah, I really like these episodes. When you watch them, it's just like a, a really good slice of time. It's a time capsule for 1993. Oh, definitely. Between animation, just the clear-cut 90s being portrayed, and yep. then the music videos. Right. I mean, it really puts you back. It's sweet. It does. And there's something to be said for watching Beavis and Butthead with the music videos. Because, mm-hmm. you know, for the longest time, if you owned any of the content on DVD or Blu-ray, it was just the episodes. So you just get these, like, four-and-a-half-minute episodes, you know, right. one-half 
after one. And the charm and what makes Beavis and Butthead gr- so great is the music videos. And it's funny that he's just ad living that yeah. and making crap up as he goes because that's, like you said, it's some of the best stuff. Of it is. I would have never assumed that he was ad libbing that right. stuff. And if you think about it, that would have been a lot of work to watch those music videos and then decide to write critiques of it. You know? Yeah. Um, I just ap- I appreciate him doing his best mystery science three theater th- mystery science theater three thousand on yeah, his music videos definitely and, uh, definitely definitely liked it a whole bunch and I uh, hope you guys did too out there in podcast land because I want to do more Beavis and Butthead oh definitely I want to do more Beavis and Butthead um, is there anything else you want to talk about with Beavis and Butthead Trav? Uh, nope just listen to more Beavis and Butthead as they come out and yep. that's it. All right, so since you said that's it, why don't we talk about our homework assignment for next episode? I'm terrified, Drew. Uh, you should be. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> you should be. So we got to say that this was a suggestion from Jake from yep. Triple Falls yep. last Halloween. Last when Halloween. When we were on their podcast, he said, you guys should do Hellraiser. So and if, here we are. If I remember uh, right, I remember looking at you or at least saying out loud, like, yikes, that's going to be hard. <laughs> and, I, and I'd never seen it, but I've seen the clip, which I'm guessing is the start of what you were just telling me before but we'll wait for people to watch it like but. the candles are around him no so it's okay. like hooks and stuff oh so yes seen... oh yes that famous shot yeah yes yes yeah so that was enough for me to know kind of what this is all about but i told you that one of my watches always when i do this is late at night on tuesdays so good I'm... luck man yeah. <laughs> watch it watch it with the lights on yeah i'm gonna have some <laughs> nightmares <laughs> But yes, we're doing Hellraiser from 1987. So shout out Jake from Triple Falls. Appreciate the recommendation. We're getting into it, getting to it a year later. But hey, we're getting to hey, it. There's only one Halloween episode. It's here. true. Yeah. It's very, very true. Um, it was directed by the venerable Clive Barker. Screenplay by Clive Barker, based on the Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. Produced by Christopher Fig, starring Claire Higgins as Julia Cotton, Ashley Lawrence as Christy Cotton, Andrew Robinson as Larry Cotton, Sean Chapman as Frank Cotton, Robert <laughs> Hines as Steve, Doug Bradley as the lead Cenobite. Cotton, 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 <laughs> and then as Steve. <laughs> as Steve. Uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Venice as the chattering Cenobite. Uh, Simon Bamford as the Butterball Cenobite, and Grace Kirby as Female Cenobite. Um, Oliver Smith as Skinless Frank slash Frank the Monster. So, Skinless Frank is in this movie. It's a main character, apparently. Skinless Frank. All right. Uh, it was produced by Film Futures, distributed distributed by Entertainment Film Distributors, um, released on September 10th, 1987 in London. Uh, Clive Barker is a British man. Uh, budget one million dollars. It made fourteen point six million dollars in eighty seven, and that's thirty eight point nine million in twenty twenty three. That's so, an insanely cheap budget, isn't it? Yes, and you can tell. Yeah. Can tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> not not in the effects, but okay. the fact that it takes place in like one location sure. the whole time, basically the same or the same room that they're filming in pretty much the whole yeah the house it's in like the same it's in the house basically the whole movie there are exterior shots and some stuff out there but it's basically in this house the whole time yeah um and as of 9 13 23 that happens to be today happy birthday camarama bama six months old today um it's available for free on pluto on demand and i believe it's commercial free because i went and watched this movie for half an hour last night and i didn't have any commercials at that point so i don't know maybe there's commercials and i didn't just, just didn't get to them but um, good luck out there in podcast land with this one. It's going to be <laughs> difficult to watch it a couple of times, I think. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't ever necessarily get nervous ever doing anything anymore, but definitely this is out of our realm wheelhouse. Yes. Yes. I remember you being extra nervous to do The Shining yes. last year, but I think it turned out great. So I'm hoping for the same effect for this one because <laughs> it seems a little treacherous to take on. Uh, yes, it will be a very explicit episode. Or at least it's going to be something where Drew and I maybe only get two watch throughs or something. Maybe not four or five like we tend to normally do. Probably not four or five. <laughs> I might have to push it to three, but... It's going to be as few watches as possible. <laughs> not, not to say that this movie is a bad movie by oh, any means. It's no. just very graphic. For sure. It's just very graphic. 
in all of its 1980s glory graphic, but it's still like they spent their budget on the effects to make that stuff yeah. look as good as it could possibly look, and they really succeeded and for I, 1987. I will say I'm excited to now say I've seen Hellraiser. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of the point of this. So I've always wanted to watch because there's like a like it seems like there's a dozen other Hellraiser, Hellraiser f- films that have been made after this, you know, sequels. Yeah. And I don't know if it's that many. I've never watched the sequel to any of these because I'm always like, I don't know if I want to go through that again. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four more times. Yeah, but uh, people love their horror films, and this is one that is a cult classic in the horror genre for sure. Yeah. People love this movie. Absolutely love it. So, um, Trav, why don't you hit me with that outro? Let's get to the email section of the show. So we got double emails from this. Damn alligator done bit my hand off. Wants to know if we could hang out with any celebrity, who would it be? And before you answer, his next question is, then from the podcast that we've covered, who would you hang out with? So don't use anyone that we've covered in a podcast for your first answer. Any celebrity that you can hang out with. Just have a fun time. Just to have a fun time. Honestly, I think I would choose like Will Arnett. He seems like he'd For be sure. a really cool dude to just like hang out with, and it'd be really fun. Will Arnett or Conan O'Brien? Sure. Um, I've had a lot of Conan in my life lately, and I want to be Conan's friend. So <laughs> uh, I think I'd choose one of those two. And for me, if I was going to choose anybody from an episode of a podcast that we've done, I would choose Tom Cruise. I know he's a weirdo, and Scientology, sorry out there to all you Scientologists, may have kind of tainted his brain a little bit. You know, (laughs) Being famous for the last nearly 50 years can kind of make you a weird dude. So I don't know how it would go, but I think I would choose Tom Cruise. I like it. I like it. How about you, man? So for Celebrity Hangout, I would either hang out with Brian Cranston. Ah. So Breaking Bad, Malcolm in the Middle. It's just such a cool dude, and he's done so many different acting gigs that I'd love hanging out with him. Um, and then I put Ryan Reynolds. I always think of him and just think he's got to be one of the funniest dudes on the planet. Yeah. If he's half as cool as he seems like he is. And if that means I get to hang out with Hugh Jackman at the same time, I mean, <laughs> that, that's the shit. Nothing um, wrong with that. So for podcasts, for me, it was a two seconds and I thought Adam Sandler. Oh, that's I'd, a good I'd go good shoot choice. some hoops with Adam Sandler. He'd be such a funny guy to hang out with for sure. Otherwise, I put DeVito because if you got to hang out with the Sunny crew because of hanging out <laughs> with DeVito, that'd yeah. be so amazing. I don't know if you saw, but Ryan Reynolds said he wants to be Max Love Interest in the next season. I uh, don't see why they wouldn't a, do that. They're best friends. Right. I mean, that'd be super hilarious. So, yeah. As, uh, all comedy people, obviously. Yeah. Um, next email here is from Born in eighty four. Wants to know our favorite winter recess activity as a kid. Oh, well, it's obviously building a snow fort. Obviously, obviously building a snow fort. Um, it was always the best if you could find a nice deep pile to dig out a cave into. Yep. Then if all else failed, you just pile up all the snow and then dig it up. Which looking back on that, I like. I think it was kind of stupid of us to do that type of stuff. Yeah, probably. could have easily been buried under feet of snow yep. with nobody paying attention. But that was my favorite uh, recess at winter activity, for sure. I thought of King of the Hill. Oh, yes, which that was we, a good one. Which I don't know how long it lasted before we weren't allowed to play King of the Hill anymore because right. someone definitely got hurt. Always. Definitely King of the Hill on the plow spot yep. in the school parking lot and then just building huge snowmen. Like yeah. Gigantic snowmen out in the uh, football field was always fun. That's awesome. Uh, so that's the emails. But my question for Drew is when you were a kid, were you a zip off the legs into shorts kind of guy or a buttons down the side of your pants kind of guy? Um, so I didn't ever have a pair of the zip off pants yeah. ever, but I'd had my fair share of tearaway pants for sure. Uh, I don't think I, I, I wore them mostly around the house, but every opportunity I got, I would just rip them off, you know, the tearaway <laughs> pants. Definitely. Every, so I would have to say I'm a tearaway, tearaway pants guy. Tearaway over pants the zip, for sure. Over the I couldn't pants. agree more. Uh, I had one pair of the zip off shorts, but you, I mean, as much as I look like a dork wearing anything, you definitely look like a dork with the zip-off shorts. <laughs> yes, you so, do. I mean, I just unzipped the legs and never wore them as pants. But definitely the button-down when it came to, like, basketball yep. and party boy from Jackass. Yep. Anything to be stupid, for sure. Very funny. 
Uh, but that wraps up another awesome show. Uh, thank you all so much for listening, and please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Overdue Homework Podcast. Help us spread the word. And email us at overduehomeworkpodcast at gmail.com. And as always, make sure you tune into the next exciting episode of the Overdue Homework Podcast. <laughs>